I wanted to show you today how to set up an AI automated blog for your Shopify store. I kind of showed you what I had set up in my last video, but I wanted to dig into it today. And it's probably the easiest workflow out of all of them so far. So let's check it out. For this, just like the rest of my auto bloggers, we are going to be using Make. So you'll want to sign into your Make account. Link down below if you don't already have one. Thank you for using my link. Helps me keep making these videos. And once I sign in, I'm going to go into my scenarios. And then I have my AI auto blogger scenarios set up right here, right at the top. And let's go into Shopify. So as you can see, pretty simple. It's just the open AI modules as I've been using them and one Shopify module because it will allow the upload of the image and the creation of the text in Shopify only need that module don't need any additional image storage modules or anything like that so let's see how I have it set up in this one I did something a bit different uh, that I told you guys about in my last video instead of doing like a clothing blog or something for my print on demand shop I decided since I was rolling with science themed things that I would do a science theme blog and so what I've done so I have three modules, all uh, creating a chat completion, which is now what is required. What it looks like, I select 3.5 Turbo. You can also select GPT-4. It's just a little bit more expensive to use chat GPT-4. And I find for this particular use, it's fine uh, for generating the title using 3.3. So I'm saving myself a bit of money by using 3.5 to generate the title versus 4, which I'm going to use in the blog creation itself because it's a little bit better with the overall creation of really long, intricate text. So I generate my title where I say, come up with a fascinating topic about science or a scientific discovery. Do not use parentheses around the title. Do not use parentheses anywhere in the text. Do not use words unveiling or unraveling. That's something that I had to add because when I first started this going, like the first five articles were all coming out with unveiling, unraveling, unveiling. So sometimes it will get really redundant on a word and you'll have to come in here and negative prompt it so that it doesn't do that. So that generates my title. Then I need to generate an image. I'm using Dolly 3 because its images are just way superior to Dolly 2. So even though it takes a little bit more money, definitely worth it. And I like the new landscape aspect ratio that you're able to choose right there. So I just say generate an image related to, and then what I've referenced right here is my title module. So it knows to build the title or to build the image based on the title that it generated. So it generates something that looks like what this blog post should be about. And then next, here comes the meat and potatoes, my blog post module. And right here, oh, I've still got it set to 3.5. So make a liar out of me, but Four definitely does it just a little bit better, and you want to select that. Oops. <laughs> anyway, so generate an authoritative blog post about one, and then I reference the message again, because that's once it comes up with a topic, now it needs to build the blog post in 3,000 words or less. Needs to be 1,500 words. Uh, basically, I don't want it to spit out anything way shorter. And then I say, and should not include ampersand anywhere in the text. Always use and instead in parentheses, add returns using HTML. And then I physically give it the HTML break, break every few sentences to break up the blog into paragraphs. If you come up with any numbered lists, you should appropriately space them apart using HTML. And I give it another example of a break and indent them properly. How did I arrive at all that? Trial and error, trial and error. At first, it was spitting out a bunch of stuff that I would really have to go edit. All of this has created a situation where now it pretty much, I can just let it fly. I don't worry about what it's going to put out there. So feel free to copy that. Any of you want to take that and expand on it, it is much welcome. Feel free to uh, comment and let me know how you've improved it. So that's, that's it. That's the main meat and potatoes. And then here we are at the Shopify module. You need to connect your Shopify store. I wanted to create a blog called, did you know? So I select my blog, then I plug in my title, which that's done the way it is in every other module. You put your cursor down and then you're able to select the response that you want, which in this case is down here. 
and you can see when I'm hovering over the appropriate module, it's flashing. So I want to grab the title, which will be found under Choices, Message, Content. And that's what I've plugged in right there. And then I add by Funkerbot. In this case, I want people to know it's an auto-generated blog and that it's being fun. And Funkerbot happens to be the name of the chat bot that I'm using on my website for customer support. Then we have Body HTML, where I am going right here. And you can see that module back there kind of hiding. It's pulsating when I hover over it. We want to get the generated blog to put in the body, which will be found in the same place choices, message, content, and now it plugs in all of that. Author, I put in, then I put Funkerbot for my author. Article is published equals yes. If you want to publish into draft state and curate these, you need to make sure to mark that no. And then under tags, you can add different tags if you want to facilitate that in your blog as well. I didn't add any yet. And then under image, this is where we have to call the data that is returned right here. So we're going to go to this data and right there, file data. Now it's calling file data here because specifically on this module, I did not return a URL. That's important. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to all my videos for these blogger videos, the images are sometimes returning image files that we use. Whereas in my automated print on demand and really 90% of the other things that I do with this module, I am selecting URL. But in this case, we are actually passing a file and that file is what gets uploaded right here in the Shopify module under image data file data. And that's it. Hit OK, and let's push this over to my Shopify shop and see how it goes. All right, so let's go check out my shop. Let's go to my blog. Ooh, that is like straight out of Lovecraft, boys. I love that imagery. Potential of artificial photosynthesis in, we'll see what the hell it's saying here. Solving the energy crisis by Funkerbot. Okay, so I mean, this is pretty cool. So I'm going to be incorporating these, uh, probably going in forward into different e-com websites that I'm doing this kind of tangential subject idea. I'm going to set this to run on a schedule which I have, you know, really kind of a daily schedule for these blogs. And that's it, publishes a new one every day. Then I might actually try a parallel blog. So I'll have both blogs going, did you know? And then another one that is going to be more about clothing, but I haven't really figured out how to, way, how to flesh that out and make it interesting and fun. So hopefully I'll figure that out soon. That is how you automate your Shopify blog. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when new videos come out. Thank you for watching. Onward and upward.